Blender 4.5 is here and it is a huge update painting the way for the new Blender 5.0 change, which means instead of less than five minutes, we're gonna cover all the features in less than 10 minutes. Let's dive in. If you don't know, Adaptive Subdivision is a checkbox you can turn on that will allow Subdivision to adapt to your displacement maps and automatically generate the geometry it needs. Is. Well, it's now more performant, working better on multi-threading. They've also reduced the vertex and triangle count and they've made it support previously missing features such as attributes, smooth UVs, and more. Now, one of the things I love about Cinema 4D is how clean its Boolean geometry is. Now, thanks to this new update, we have that in Blender with the Boolean solver called Manifold. This is more robust, it results in cleaner geometry, and it works faster on multi-core setups. Now, I'm not sure why people aren't talking about this more because this is a big deal, but the lights just got new controls to bring them closer to realism, including a new exposure control, and a temperature control that lets you choose the light color using Kelvin values. You can also now normalize the lights, making them bigger and brighter if you want. In texturing, you can now use color randomization on brushes, adding hue, saturation, and value variations across the strokes. This is going to be great for creating realistic, organic brush presets. Eevee also saw some performance boosts with faster texture loading and faster startup times. The shader compilation, this is huge, is now multi-threaded. Combine this with the new Vulkan update, and you have a much faster viewport performance. GPU subdivision is faster and extremely faster on certain GPUs, including Apple, which now has seen a boost from seven frames per second all the way up to 12 frames per second in the viewport. Vulkan is here and now fully functional to replace OpenGL, and this literally makes everything in the viewport faster. I actually did an entire video on this and testing how much faster it is, so I will link to that in the description below. Now, one of my new favorite features is the Set Mesh Normal node which lets you manipulate normals directly with a geometry node. It's great for creating smooth transitions between topology without actually altering the topology, meaning it's almost like a hack for creating blobby characters or doing hard surface modeling. Grease Pencil saw a lot of support this update, including a new Grease Pencil render pass, which lets you isolate Grease Pencil strokes in the compositor. Grease Pencil now has the option to filter out rendering per layer, and this can be found in the view layer properties under filter, include grease pencil. Bump mapping saw improvements with shadow near geometry edges now looking more accurate with improved bump correction. And there's a new filter width option that lets you soften sharp texture edges. Now, something I've been waiting for for years is better curve tools. And with the new curve systems, we're getting tools such as separate, join, split, and convert attribute. Vertex parenting gets a major upgrade with customized parent indices. You can now use final evaluated indices for much better accuracy. We have a new free normal format, which stores normals directly as 3D vectors on the vertex and faces which is much faster than tangent space normals. UVs from multiple selected objects now display in all modes, which is great for things like game optimization. I just want to take a moment to say that if you're looking to save time in Blender, check out my product's Dynamic Visual Effects Pack, where you can quickly drag and drop customizable visual effects into your scene, or my Crafty Asset Pack, where you can drag and drop a whole host of materials designed to give you a crafty look. This is also a great way to support the channel, but let's get back to the updates. You can now override bone display settings per individual bone, giving you more flexibility when building rigs. They've also added a snap mode to the driver's graph. For shape keys, you can now duplicate them quickly, or you can update them using selected objects with matching shape key names, which is a real time saver. There's a select group operator in pose mode now that includes new options like children and siblings, making it easier to select chains of bones. If you hold control, you can use playhead snapping in the timeline. Now this works in the graph editor, the dope sheet, the timeline, and more. When you press K, it brings up the insert keyframe menu, and now it always includes the available option, which keeps the hotkeys consistent. The jump to keyframes operator has also been unified, making it simpler and more powerful. If you didn't know, the copy global transform is one of the best add-ons included for Blender for free. It now supports built-in keying sets. Blender's compositor now includes many nodes from geometry shader node trees, including things like vector math, clamp, float, curve, black body, and more. We've also got an image info and image coordinate nodes to help you get pixel specific data. And we have access to import more textures like noise, Veroni, and brick. But I'd like to add one of the most exciting updates to the compositor is that the GPU now has support for denoise node, making it significantly faster to use. And the backdrop finally has a gizmo. Praise the Lord, this makes it so much easier to use. And to go with that, we have a new overlay, which is added to visualize the render size when working with the viewer node. And to wrap up all this amazing compositor update, 
Many of the node settings are now exposed as input sockets, just giving you more control over what you can use on these nodes. Render output paths can now use variables like blend name or resolution X, and this allows you to auto names files and folders, making it easier to set up batch renders. And an exciting performance update, scenes with many objects now build dependency graphs up to 18% faster. Shout out to my nerds, now we can do custom cameras via OSL. This is great for things like exhibits or VR where you need to create custom projections. AMD's hip RT backend is now on by default, resulting in faster renders on modern AMD cards. Now, if you're into low poly modeling, you'll be excited to hear that in EV, the shadow terminator has been fixed and there's a new bias set setting that removes those ugly self-shadowing artifacts on low-poly models, making them easier to work with. There's been some improvements to EV's use of Z-depth and a better handling of long-distance views, reducing the amount of Z-fighting and depth glitches. They also fixed some visual bugs, including making shadows cleaner thanks to quantized normals, and there's also less light leaking from large lights. Non-selectable objects no longer interfere with auto depth or selection. Geometry nodes saw some updates as well, with panels and attribute search now being supported in the node group operator panel. We got a huge selection of new import nodes, including OBJ, STL, and more. Crease Pencil also got more geometry node support with a new dedicated add menu, now layer names are searchable, and we have new nodes to control various elements such as depth, color, and softness. One of the nodes I'm most excited about is a new visual geometry to objects node, which allows for procedurally generated instances to be turned into editable objects and collections. We also got a lot of new nodes great for utility, including the camera info node, which is good for culling. And then we got the new field nodes for average, min, max, variance, and more. We had the format string node, which is the Python style formatting node. And then we also got things like instance bounds, bit mass, string matching, and more. And as always, we're excited to see performance games with attribute interpolation being up to seven times faster and normals, including the custom normals, now calculate over two times faster when working with geometry nodes. We have a new anti-aliasing option for Grease Pencil called SAAA, standing for Super Sampling, which joins SMAA for better line quality. You can combine both of these for the best results, but be aware of overblurring. They've also reduced the point radius clamping. It's been removed, which allows for ultra thin strokes, but be careful because they'll disappear if you don't have the proper anti-aliasing. Modifiers now support layer group filtering and node tools now work on Grace Pencil objects as well. If you don't know, these are the geometry node setups that you can create and save as presets under your modifier panel. The boundary strokes are now called filled guides, and this is a really cool feature where if you hold Alt and left mouse and while using the fill tool, you can draw custom guides around your grease pencil objects. They've also added an option to auto remove these guides after use. We got new operators with the mask with layer above and below, split outline and remove fill guides, and we can convert curve types. You can now limit onion skinning to just the active object, and SVG exports now support animated frame ranges. The 3D cursor even saw an update this time around, where now Snap to Cursor includes rotation support. Point Cloud is now a fully supported object type, and it's no longer experimental. Liquid Sim saw a huge performance boost, being up to 1.5 times faster overall, and they've also improved the UI layout within the settings. I never thought I'd see the day where I was excited about improvements to importing, but here we are. This importer is now 3 to 15 times faster and supports older FBX files, and with SVG, we can now import multiple SVGs at once. GLTF and USD also saw several improvements, and it's exciting to announce that now Blender can write ProRes video files. Color management now supports open color IO file rules for better auto color space detection. If you use Blender for visual effects, you'll be happy to hear that motion tracking has had a speed up of keyframe selection by up to 50%, and you can visualize the preview range. There's a new volume coefficient shader node. It's a clean all-in-one node that replaces the volume scatter, absorption, and emission. It's perfect for physically based volume materials using real world data. Rendering in BMP format now supports alpha transparency. When working with sculpting and painting, you can now quickly isolate parts of your model based on color with the new mask by color feature. If you use a tablet, you'll be happy to hear that sculpt brushes like draw, clay strips, and more now support pen tilt, and there's a new visual tilt preview making it super intuitive. The new manifold Boolean solver also works in sculpt mode, making it more reliable and faster for trim tools. Brush management just got a little bit better because now we can duplicate brush assets. Sculpting saw big performance games this update with faster sculpting on high-res meshes, especially when using the multi-res modifier. Clay strips now brush about 1.2 times faster, and no tools in sculpt mode are now snappier when modifying just mask positions or face sets. There's even some cool updates for the user interface. You can now hold control and scroll over numbers and text boxes for quick value tweaking, or there's a new remove all materials operator, which is a one-click cleanup. We can also now take screenshots directly in Blender for asset previews, and it even automatically removes the background and makes it transparent. And they added a new horizontal list view, which shows more assets in the asset manager. 
You can also drop collections directly into the 3D view and they'll snap to the surfaces and grids automatically. The node editor saw some changes too. We now press F to add a frame node instead of J and frame colors will alternate automatically and label positions will be smarter, making it easier to read. The file browser now supports dragging multiple files into the scene properly. Both video audio rotation and color space conversion are noticeably faster in the video sequence editor. And lastly, there is now HDR preview support in the video sequence editor. If you're enjoying all these free Blender updates, then check out the Blender Dev Fund where you can help support the development of Blender.